everybody and welcome back. Uh, this is my daily driver, the Mini Cooper 2003. It's an S. It needs brakes in the rear. I stopped driving it last week because it was starting to kind of send the uh, screecher noise off in the back, so just quit. It is only in the rear, I believe. This car has almost 400,000 on it, 380 something. So um, I just put new tires on it. And came out, and this one is flat. Probably can't see that in the film. But that has to come off anyway to change the brakes. So I figure um, pull that guy off, take it into the shop to get it fixed, or spin it around and see if I can see anything on it that is causing that issue. And then we will uh, get this guy back on the road because I gotta tell you, I have been driving the Forerunner, not the world's most comfortable car, and that Forerunner there looks good, looks nice, two wheel drive, and that's rear wheel drive, and it is just not good. It's a terrible, terrible ride. So I want my baby back, and I'm gonna get her back and going today and then we're gonna jump on some projects i don't know how much of this i'll film because basically i just need to get it done so we'll see well one side is done and that little booger fought me the whole way and i aired this tire up and i did go over it and look to see if i can see anything and i think that might be our problem so i'm gonna leave that in there it's holding air and I soaked it and it doesn't appear to be leaking so we're gonna put that back on the car and drive it to the place and see if we can't get them to fix that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change the other side and get this girl back on the road not exactly the best conditions to be doing a brake job her outside I'm in the gravel this is just not ideal 30 mile an hour winds yada yada but Onto the second side, I'm gonna take this tire off, throw it under the center of the car, and that all loose. And uh, my dad always taught me better safe than sorry. So I have the other side on jack stands because Aaron offered to take that tire in and get it fixed while I was working on this side. So, taking advantage of that, up under the car and then we do have an issue it's only going to go as far as the tire now back over here get you in a position where maybe you can see something the last one kind of fought me because everything is so crusty and corroded this car is uh She's starting to show her age. It's all right, we still love it. So these little clips on the other side were seized. Let me get the PP blaster. The other uh, side actually looked a little worse than this one. This one doesn't look that bad. I have to get that on the rooter. I'm not changing the rotors out on it. The car has so many miles on it. It's the back brakes. If it was the front, I probably would consider it. Yeah, those boogers are in there. Let me get a let me get a different tool. So if you hear me huffing and puffing out here, <clears throat> got about six layers on. Got it. And uh, my cores pretty warm but my hands and feet are getting cold so on the back side if I can get the camera in there or not on the back side this little rubber boot and I, that was that cap I just took off and there's one down low to we'll grab it and take it off and then they are an Allen style uh, bolt that's inside there and so you just have to thread that off that will remove this 
and allow this caliper to drop down. Make sure the emergency brake is off uh, so it's not pulling on us. And so let me get that other cap off of there. It's on the bottom side. I'll take the camera out of the stand here and I'll show you where that is. So our top one is right here. It's going to go down the caliper to right here. You can see that other little cap. I can get it off one handed or not. There's the second cap, and it's the same size as this top one. So we're just going to release those. We'll drop this down, replace the pads, and bolt it all back up. And I am using what I have in the shop, which normally like this, something like this, I'd take it to my dad's. So to get that loose, <laughs> I am using this. So I may have to cut this up and weld something to go into the driver because that sucker is tight. Alright, got that top one loose. I saved you the struggle of yeah, we're good. Save you the struggle of watching me struggle. The torture of watching me struggle is what I meant to say. suckers were tight. They actually weren't as tight as the other side. The other side was really bad. Move you over here. Maybe you can see what's going on. The sun's going to be killing you for a bit. It's killing me. Not complaining though. I'd be down here able to do this if it wasn't sunny today. Let's get that guy out of there all the way. I think we've got it. I am gonna push him back with the screwdriver. Make sure we're all the way out here. All right, there we go. Get that bolt out of our way. That guy should be free. See if we can't get that off of there. I can adjust you up just a hair. Yeah, you're getting your sun glare. Got your sunglasses on. Might be able to get you from there, I'm not sure. I actually need to break down and Get this camera fixed. Yep, that's worse. How about that? Is that better? If I can leave my gloves off for this one or not. I'm touching on that cold metal. It's cold out. And I may have to tap on this just to hear. Almost. And we're off. Not much left on those guys. That. Get the camera to focus. That is done. That one was definitely our problem, child. one looks like <laughs> that one is down into the backing plate I don't know if I can get the camera to take a good picture of that or not but that guy's done Let's put some new ones on there I just show you the difference hold up these are the two backside new and old springs I think the springs are even smashed. 
Wow. There's your difference in thickness of the of the pad. There to there. And that one doesn't even exist. That ought to make a difference. So the one with the springs and that little blank space there goes on the back. And there's a little hook. You can see it right here on the front, this little hook right here. That's where those get put on there. So there's our front. Tiny little brake pads. And then we have to get this caliper, big piston, sorry, my big old finger in the way there. We gotta get this pushed back. And the easiest way to do that is to use a brake kit. We don't have a brake kit, so the second easiest way to do that is to use a big old C-clamp. And I actually had to go buy one this time because the one I had was not big enough. This should be plenty big. This is an eight inch clip. Worked fine on the other side. There are four little holes uh, in that piston. For the brake kits that you get, you get a washer that kind of sits down in these four little holes. And so then when you, when you tighten it, it actually turns this as well. But on the other side, I used the C-clamp. It worked fine. I didn't have any issue with it. So we're gonna push it back using the same method on this one. I believe on a mini, they are both, uh, they both turn clockwise. So when you're tightening down on a C-clamp, it really doesn't matter. It's gonna go the correct way. This is normally what I use as a pillow when I'm working on a car. This is a yoga block. I bought pink, that way nobody would steal it. Uh, so, just gonna loosen this up. And it pushes pretty hard at first, but then uh, after about two good cranks on the clamp, it usually goes back pretty easily. Turn it. I am going to have to get in a different position. Sorry I had to move you on the uh, pushing that piston back. I just got the wrong angle. One angle, if I put you the facing back, you were shooting into my crotch, which that's not the best view. The other angle, you were shooting directly into the sun, so I had to just uh, turn you off for a bit. Uh, we did break in the new C-clamp, though. I will never understand why they don't make that out of something harder than uh, what you're going to be cr cranking down on. I guess if you, they figure if you can't crank it with your hand, you shouldn't be putting a pipe on it. But, of course, you're going to put a pipe on it if you can't turn it. I mean, come on. I even bent the pipe. The thing was so tight. Once I got it going, there's my pipe I was putting over it. I even bent that. I think we have it far enough though. Let's see if I can get that up over the brake pads. Now the piston has to go kind of in the middle. Oops, wrong one. There's a spring, a couple springs. You can see there's kind of a round spot right there and that piston sits right in the middle. So I need to get that lined up to where that guy can go right back over the middle of that. All right, I think I got that on there. I actually had to take the uh, one of the pads and just shave off about, I don't know, 30 seconds of an inch or so. The way that this, uh, there's a little tab sewed, or st sewed, riveted to the backing plate, and that little guy, whatever that thickness is, probably, I don't know, probably 30 second, just would not allow that to slide over. 
I know that piston is probably not back completely all the way. Probably part of our issue. That guy did not want to go on there. Now, let's get everything lined up. We should be good. I'm just barely hitting this. I'm really not, wouldn't have to hit it, but my hands are so cold. Just can't quite have the strength that I normally would have. And I am gonna put just a little bit of Never Seize on those as I thread them in. Should have done that when I had it off of there, but. I can tell you right now, I am not taking that off again. This car will probably never need rear brakes again. I hope if we do, this caliper is most likely going to have to be replaced. Good news on the tire was I had purchased road hazard on it and <laughs> they could not fix that so it had to replace the tire. Bad news is I have to wait till Monday. It's going to be driving the 4Runner yet another day. So apparently those bolts need to be uh, break your neck tight. I am not going to put them that tight. I likely will not have to do this again. I'm just going to put them snug. There's probably a uh, torque spec on these. But we're not going to worry about it. Those rotors look pretty gnarly though, don't they? This car hasn't been driven in two weeks in the Midwest. That rust sets in pretty quickly after it's been sitting for a while, especially in the winter time. All the salt and everything that's on the roads. Put our buttons back on. I had to take just such a small shaving off of that. I can't believe I couldn't get it on there without. And... Whew, hands are cold. All right, put the bottom one in first. I'm gonna be that way about it. feeling in my fingers left. Get in there, you gunky. Try going from the other side. Chilly. So chilly. Not exactly the day to be doing this, but it's the day I had, so it's the day we're doing it. <laughs> you punk. There we go. All buttoned up. Now, got this junk out of the way here. Tire back on there. Back you up just a little bit. 
may have to come up one more on the jack. Get that on there. Many Coopers don't have a donut spare. I only have one because the car's been wrecked so many times that I've managed to keep one. Not by me. Been wrecked. It was hit five times. Parked in the parking lot. This rim was uh, pretty scraped up. So. After they replaced it, I asked to keep it and keep the tire on it. And a repeat on this side. With our newly aired up tire. The good news is if I smash my finger, I won't know it because they're so cold. Stick a tire iron underneath that, or you can stick a leg under it and lift it up. Sorry about that, I got interrupted full on mom mode here. This will at least let me move the car tomorrow. I'm gonna work on a couple other projects. Just need to get the car out of the way since they can't get my tire for a couple days. It's the weekend and they can't get it till Monday. So. Please let me move it. All right, drop, get the jack stands out. Drop this guy down and tighten up all eight of those. Four on this side and four on the other. She should be good to go. Thanks for watching everybody. Catch you on the next one.